Obviously, we take very seriously the situation uh, around uh, canola and the, the Chinese decisions. We know that the canola produced here in Canada is top quality and the uh, oversight, inspection and science that surrounds uh, what we do here is uh, top-notch and world-class and that is certainly something that we are going to continue to impress upon uh, the, our, uh, our Chinese uh, interlocutors uh, on this issue. Canada's rocky relationship with China hit another bump today. Beijing has now blocked canola imports from a second Canadian producer, Viterra, over alleged contamination by pests. Is it another retaliatory measure against Canada's December arrest of Huawei CFO Meng Wanzhou? The Prime Minister says he's considering, as you heard, sending a high-level delegation to China to try to resolve the canola situation. Canadian farmers sell about 40% of their canola oil and seeds to China, worth more than $2.2 billion. So have they begun to feel the pain from this? Ralph Eichler is Manitoba's Minister of Agriculture. He joins us by FaceTime from Brandon, Manitoba. Hi, Minister. Thanks for being with us. Really appreciate it. Hi. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I uh, wish it was better. Uh situation than what we're currently seeking right now. Understood. L let me ask you to explain what you perceive or, or how you perceive the severity of this situation. How big of a deal is canola to Manitoba's economy and how big of a deal is this decision by China? It's a $350 million hit for the province of Manitoba. Certainly we know there's one that an issue has to be resolved sooner than later. We're calling on the Prime Minister and his cabinet to set up a trade mission which should include Manitoba and Saskatchewan, in order to resolve this issue sooner than later. We're right on top of the seeding season as we get ready. So the decisions are imperative that we get this right and resolve this issue, base it on science, not on politics. Our farmers need somebody to stand up for them. So we're doing exactly that. Do you think there is the possibility of a science-based solution? I certainly do, and we've had our, uh, our test be done to verify through CFI that, in fact, our product is safe. It meets the demands that was placed upon our producers. So we want to make sure that we continue our business relationship with China, not only for Manitoba, but for all of Canada. Do you think China's decision is connected to what's happened with Meng Wanzhou? You know, I would hope it wouldn't be, but I believe it is. And unfortunately, that impacts our farm families, our economy, and of course, each and every farm family that relies on this trade bill, they help them get through their financial strains as well. So let me ask you then, if you do think that it is connected, how would a scientific solution work in this case? Well, put it part of the contract in order to ensure that they can't play games with or without the science base. I mean, we need to know very what they demand and of our product. Our farmers are very resilient. They can make our product meet the standards of whatever is there. They have met that. And I take a sense of, uh, of responsibility when we think that our farm families done everything they could to be treated this way without a science-based uh, uh, method of which they're not ready, prepared to fare. And it's just unfortunate our farms are caught in between. When you say that you'd like a trade mission, you'd like Canada to get together a trade mission to go there, are you talking about sort of you want conversations on the political level, on the diplomatic level? That's exactly right. I mean, it's about relationships, and you don't treat friends and family in a way if you have a relationship with them. I always call it you're having a conversation with your friends, but if you're just chatting, you're not really taking each other seriously. And this is a serious matter for Canada, serious matter for our farm families. And I think we need to put it behind us sooner than later. I guess my question is, though, do you think that type of a conversation is possible given the backdrop against which this is all happening, given the fact that there are two Canadian men detained uh, in China right now in an apparent, you know, in apparent retaliation for the arrest of Meng Wanzhou? Do you think that type of a discussion could be fruitful, produce the results you're hoping for, given what's really happening here? You know what? I, I learned a long time ago, even as a young child, that we have to reach out sometimes and just say, look, we're sorry if you, uh, if you did something wrong. That's what I'm asking China to do, is to say they're sorry and reinstate our uh, trade relationship with the canola. And of course, all our other agriculture products that are so important to our vital trade between China and Canada. Is your government considering providing relief for farmers in the meantime? You know, it's too early to uh, try and anticipate what this might look like. The sooner we get the issue resolved, uh, canola is down $20 a ton as of now. We don't want to see drop any lower, but certainly there's no doubt that, that we can get this re issue resolved 
And if it will, we'll see the market come back to where it should be. They really need a good product, and our Manitoba farm families and Canadian families do that. They provide a great product, and I think China is uh, abusing their relationship with us at this point in time. If, if that price continues to drop, and that $20 is already a big drop, though, if it does continue to drop, if there doesn't look to be a scientific solution on the horizon, is your government open to considering that relief? Well, certainly it's, it's more of a federal issue when it comes to compensation in that line. But certainly we'll be standing up for our farm families and advocating for what we can do to help them make sure they're sustainable short term and, of course, long term. All right. I'll leave it there. Thank you, Minister Eichler. I appreciate your time today. You're welcome. Thank you. Welcome back to Power and Politics in the Power Panel with Supriya Devetti, Stockwell Day, Francoise Boivin, and Katie Simpson. And another big Canadian canola company will no longer be selling to China, Viterra had its license revoked after China alleged shipments contained impurities. How serious is this trade issue becoming for the Liberal government? Stockwell, I'll start with you. How big of a deal for the feds is this, do you think? Well, I hate to start saying, you know, it doesn't get any worse, but it's, this is getting bad. And uh, CBC is, seems to be even more concerned about this than uh, the federal government, because federal government's obviously distracted with the s and uh, stuff, but uh, CBC's been raising this for a while, and now another company has been shut down. We're the largest, Canada's the largest exporter in the world of the best canola in the world. 40% goes to China, and now we're getting it shut down. So you add that uh, to what we're facing in terms of natural resources and the pipeline issues, throw in the steel tariffs, we've got some very serious stuff going on, and the Prime Minister is distracted because of the s and situation. You know, there's some talk about what other countries can we work with or what can we do. When you look at other countries that have been similarly hit because of crossing tracks with China in the past, these things simply go on for or tend to go on for a number of years before China says, okay, we're going to ease up. We really can't afford this to go on for a number of years. And the Prime Minister, his entire team, has just got to get more focused on this. And Katie, you've been covering the issue, because this is not just about canola, no. obviously. This is about uh, what's happened between China and Canada over the last, last number of months, beginning with the arrest of Meng Wanzhou, Huawei's CFO, the apparent retaliatory detainment of mm -hmm. Michael Koberg and Michael Spaver. It's just, I mean, the big question, we had the, the Agriculture Minister from Manitoba on earlier, and there's all this pressure sort of, you know, take a take diplomats there, try to, try to raise the conversation. What are you hearing? about the ability of Canadian officials or politicians to even get an audience in China. Right now, the government's plan is to possibly send a high-level delegation from the Canadian Food Inspection Agency over to China to try and work on this on a science-based merit process. Uh, because uh, Canada, the, the, we've heard from Jim Carr, the, the trade minister, say, look, show us the proof that we have a problem here and and we will deal with it and we will make sure that our product is... is Canada says there is no problem with the product and uh, can, the Canadian product is... is there, there hasn't been any issue with it. However, China has man, has a Accused, has been accused of manufacturing a crisis about this before in 2016 uh, to try and make a power play ahead of Justin Trudeau's first visit to China back in 2016. This was an issue hanging over uh, over his first visit. So this is typical for China when they when there is an issue that is not related to or if there is a diplomatic dispute, China reaches out in different ways. Whether it's uh, we've seen in the past, they do arrest citizens from other countries where there is some sort of dispute. They take economic action against those countries. We've seen it with Norway. We've seen it with South Korea. We've seen it with Canada. So this is very typical for what happens when you are in a diplomatic dispute with China and there are some significant concerns there. But in terms of uh, the, the, the prime minister or the government's ability to get any sort of audience, any sort of high-level audience, because this issue is, is, is such a big concern in Canada as and it is also getting uh, a lot of attention in China. Those overnight briefings by the foreign ministry spokesperson, there are questions from... Uh, about this Canada issue, um, but to resolve something of this level would happen at a higher level. It would even happen above the uh, the ambassador level at this point. Canada well, there doesn't... There is no ambassador. There is no ambassador. <laughs> there is no Canadian ambassador there right now, but everyone I've spoken to, whether they're, they're currently in the game right now, whether they're advising the government or whether they're sort of from a step back, everyone says Jim Nickel, the, the deputy head who is running the embassy acting in Beijing, as, yeah. the acting, uh, apparently he's very competent. But again, at, at this point, this is a dispute that needs to be resolved at a much higher level, and there's no signs that there's going to be any sort of high-level dialogue 
dialogue on that. And how much of an issue is that for the federal government, Francoise? I think it, it is a big, um, it's a big uh, issue. Uh, remember in 2015 when they said Canada's back at the world stage. Um, there's a few uh, big challenges that they don't seem to be able to 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 win over uh, the, uh, the the Trudeau government. I mean, the tariffs with the states and the signing of the uh, of the agreement over there. The uh, the situation with China. I mean, it, serious accusations from China saying that uh, we've got spies and we've got guys there who are accused of spying. Um, what Katie was talking about that it's their methodology when they're not happy with your political stand. They find something economically to uh, to hit you with. It was salmon, I think, with, with Norway, Norway that you yeah. were mentioning. Uh, now it's canola from, from Canada. But meanwhile, while all this is happening and there doesn't seem to be a, a strong voice talking for Canada and taking matters at the highest level, um, what there's do you mean some by producers. That, well, we don't hear nothing. I... I, I I don't doubt that uh, the uh, uh, the interim is 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 good and competent in China, but uh, knowing Chinese and how they like to t to talk at certain level, I'm sure that's not enough. So they lost McCollum. Um, there's no ambassador to really translate daily, uh, like Stockwell was saying. They're they're otherwise occupied. The uh, Canadian government doesn't seem to be, to matter until there's something really strongly, like today, maybe they will f uh, finally uh, take a uh, uh, matter more seriously. That's what the feeling is. And if I was in Manitoba, and and um, I, I'd be I'd be a bit uh, worried right now with uh, what is happening. So so when you're thinking about sorry I'll get right back. yeah Supriya when you're when the government is trying to figure out how to handle this I mean like what are some of the I just I get what everybody's saying like I get the man everyone's saying go over there try and work on a science based solution but it seems like nobody is picking up Canada's call so how do they how do they get over this hump is that even possible. Well, I think first and foremost, you get there, right? You send a high-level delegation. You get every ally we have on the issue that has possibly also uh, gotten into it with the uh, dystopian authoritarian regime that, that is China that can manage to do things like this on a regular basis with its economic trading partners uh, to sort of as well uh, you know, help us out to the degree that they can. Um, I understand that this is an, an, an incredible issue for, for, for the government in a bad way. Uh, I think dollars-wise, stock had mentioned 40% goes to China. I think that represents like something like $2.7 billion yeah. mm -hmm. with yeah. a B. Uh, yeah. So that's nothing to sneeze at. Certainly puts the 9,000 S&C jobs in perspective. Um, but, but but also the, the other issue here, uh, and I can understand that the government is otherwise occupied. I, I don't discount that. But the other... Um, I guess sort of missed opportunity is that the opposition thus far has been pushing SNC and only SNC uh, on the government. It, it seems like perhaps now there are much bigger issues uh, at play that the opposition may also want to um, sort of capitalize on. 